Hi there and welcome to Higgity Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and in this video we're going to be looking at transformations of functions too. And it's based around the core maths for A level but is applicable to most other maths modules. Okay, so continuing our work from the previous video, um, we're going to look at two other types of transformation. Um, those two are a times f of x and f of ax. Once again, I'm going to be using Desmos to demonstrate these. And I would suggest that you get onto the website desmos.com and have a play around with it yourself so you can experience and maybe figure out exactly what these transformations do. Okay, so I've set up a function here. Um, f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. So a fairly straightforward quadratic. We can see that it has roots at 1, 0 and 2, 0. And we have a minimum value at 1.5, negative 1 quarter. And the first transformation we're going to look at is a times f of x. So we can see that uh, the function here is in purple. And the, the original function is underneath it in red. So I've just set a equal to 1. So the two functions are identical. Let's see what happens if I make a equal to 2. Okay, so there's been a definite transformation of the function, but you might notice that the roots have stayed the same, and the function seems to have gone further down. So the minim minimum value is no longer um, at 1.5 negative a quarter, it's at 1.5 negative 1 half. What about if I was to make it 4? Let's see what happens. You might be able to guess. So remember, the original had a minimum value at 1.5, negative 1 quarter. If I make this equal to 4, the minimum value is at 1.5, negative 1. So it seems to have gotten 4 times longer in this direction. What about if I was to make it 8? You might be able to guess what's happening here. So when I made it 8, it's no longer negative 1 quarter. It's now at uh, y equals negative 2. So again, the roots are staying the same all the time, but the graph seems to be getting stretched in a uh, vertical um, manner. So let's see what happens if I make it a negative number. Let's set it equal to negative 1. When it's equal to negative 1, the graph, again the roots are staying the same, so nothing's happening in a horizontal direction, but in a vertical direction, it looks like the graph has been flipped over, so we have a reflection here in the x-axis. What if I was to make it negative 2? Again, the roots are staying the same, but you'll notice that we've had a reflection taking place and it's been stretched upwards in a vertical manner. If I make it negative 4, again, the negative number reflects the function and then the 4 actually stretches it in a vertical manner. And it was at negative 1 quarter, so it's going to be at positive 1. Let's just get a definition here. When we do a times f of x, we end up with a vertical stretch or squash by a scale factor a. Now you may be wondering what the squash is. Let's go back and see what happens when we put in a fraction. So let's do let's do a half. When we do a half, you'll notice that the graph has been squashed, so it's no longer at 1.5. Uh, 1.5 negative 1 quarter, it's now at 1.5 negative 1 eighth. So the, <coughs> excuse me, the minimum value, um, the y coordinate has been halved. So it's no longer negative a quarter, it's now negative 1 half. And similarly, if I make this a negative number, we should get a reflection. And again, it's been squashed in. So it's no longer, it's not going to be um, one, uh, 1 1.5 and a quarter, it's going to be 1.5 and 1 eighth, because it's half of the y value. Okay, so that's the first 
transformation done. I'm going to reset this A equal to 1. And we're going to take a look at the second one. So f of A times x. f of A times x. Okay, so once again, um, we, have, we have a blue function now, which I'm going to transform. But let's see what happens if I make it equal to 2. You might be able to guess the last one did something in a vertical direction. And if you remember from the last video, chances are this is going to do something in a horizontal direction. Let's see what happens when I double this value. When I double the value, the roots have changed from 1, 0 and 2, 0 and are now a half in 0 and 1, 0. So not too clear what's going on yet. Let's see what happens if I make it 4. When I make it 4, the graph seems to be getting squashed in and getting smaller. The minimum value is not changing. Minimum value, well, the minimum value is, a minimum value of y is not changing. The minimum value of x, or sorry, the, the value of x at the minimum value is changing. But how is it changing? Okay, let's look at the x values again. Um, for the root here it was 1 0 and then here it's a quarter 0 and over here it's 2 0 and here it's a half 0. So what exactly is going on? Let's see what happens if we make it 8. If I make it 8 and the root seems to be getting closer together. Here they have a gap of 1, and here we've got a value of 1 8 and a quarter, so the distance between them is 1 8. So there seems to be some sort of reciprocal um, stretch or squash going on. What about if I was to make it a half? Let's see what happens. When we make a half, 1, 0 and 2, 0 have become 2, 0 and 4, 0. So you'll notice that the gap between the, the roots has actually doubled. If I was to make it a quarter, the gap between the roots is no longer 1, it's now 4. So there's definitely something going on here with the reciprocal value. You'll notice again that the minimum value is not changing. Minimum value is not changing. Um, or the minimum value of y, should I say, is not changing. Minimum value of x is changing. What happens if you multiply 1.5 times 4 and you get 6? So there's definitely a relationship here. Okay, let's see what happens if we do a negative value for a. So I'm going to change a back to 1. There it is there. And let's see what happens when we make it negative 1. We seem to have been reflected in the y-axis because 1, 0 has become negative 1, 0. And 2, 0 has become negative 2, 0. So we're having a reflection in the y-axis. What about if we make it negative 2. So I'll expect a reflection and I'll expect a horizontal squashing. There's, there's some sort of reciprocal relationship going on, going on here. Negative 2. So we've had the reflection in the axis and the roots are not one apart anymore. They're only a half apart. Okay, what about if I make it negative 1 half? I expect a reflection in the y-axis and I expect the distance between the roots to double. So we've had the reflection. Uh, 1, 0 becomes negative 2, 0. And 2, 0 becomes negative 4, 0. And all along, you'll notice that the, the y-coordinate for the minimum value is not changing. Okay, so when we do f of a times x, we end up with a horizontal 
stretch or squash by a scale factor 1 over a. And that's the reciprocal relationship that I was talking about. Right, so let's put this into practice. First one I'm looking to do is f of x equals negative x squared plus 4 and I'm asked to sketch 2 times f of x. So we can see the function here. We can see some of the important values, the two roots and the maximum value. So I'm going to start by drawing the axes. And do remember that, <coughs> excuse me, do remember that a times f of x, which is what we're dealing with here, a times f of x is a vertical scale factor of a. So I would expect the roots to stay the same. The roots are going to stay the same. Negative 2 and 0. And 2, 0. But we're going to have a vertical scale factor stretch <coughs> of a. So if the maximum value was 0, 4, I would expect the maximum value to be 0, 8. It's going to double. So we've put in our critical points, our important values, and we just sketch the function. It should look like that. Uh, let's see if I can move this down a bit. There we go. And that's a sketch of 2 times f of x. Let's try the second one here. I want to do negative 3 times f of x. So, again, sketch the axes. It's a times f of x, remember, is a vertical stretch or squash. So that means that we're going to be dealing with um, <coughs> the roots are going to stay the same. Negative 2, 0. And... 2, 0, but the y value of the maximum is going to change. Now, how is it going to change? Well, it's negative 3x, so I need a reflection and I need to triple the value of the y coordinate. So that would end up being down here at 0, negative 12. So the function will reflect, which means it's now going to look like this and pass through there, that's now the minimum value and then back up through the same route. I'm just going to do another quick one here. Um, suppose I was asked to sketch um, negative a half of f of x negative a half of f of x so we'll do it over here Again, it's like a times f of x, so it's a vertical stretch or squash. Um, that means the roots will stay the same at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. Um, it's negative, which means it's going to reflect in the axis, and it's a half, so the y value will no longer be um, 4, it's going to be 0 and negative 2. So we've got the reflection and half the distance down the axis. And off we go. So it's going to look like that. Okay, uh, example 3. f of x equals negative x plus 4. Again, I want to do f of 2 times x. Straighten that out. Okay, so this is a different type. This is f of ax. f of ax is that type of transformation, which is a horizontal, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to change in the x direction of a scale factor 1 over a. So we have to remember that the, the maximum value is going to stay the same. Maximum value will still be 0 and 4. However, the roots are no longer going to be at uh, 
negative 2 and 0 and 2 and 0, because it's a reciprocal transformation, the distance between them is going to half. In other words, we're going to half the coordinates, the x-coordinates. So it's going to be negative 1 and 0 and 1 and 0. So we end up with a function that looks something like this. So we end up with a bit of a squash in the x direction. Shape stays similar and the maximum value stays as is. Okay, let's try example four. Um, example four seems to have gone missing, so let's go on to example five. Um, we've got a cubic function here. Um, the cubic function is shown across here, and we're asked to do two times f of x. So, quick sketch. Um, now this is a times f of x, which is a vertical scale factor of a vertical. Vertical scale factor of a value a. So the the root is not going to change. So the root is still going to be at one zero. I beg your pardon, negative one zero. Um, but this value here on the y-axis is going to double. It's going to go up to zero. 2, 0, 2. So the function, in fact, let me move this down because it's a sketch. Tell me how to do this. So the function still follows the same similar path like this. Uh, it'll pass through here and then go off in this direction. It should be smoother than that. Let's have a look at the second one here. Example six, we're asked to do um, f of x uh, is given, and then we want to sketch this function, negative three times f of x. Again, remembering that we're working in the vertical direction. So the root is still going to be here at negative 1 and 0. The negative number in front of the 3 means that the function is going to be reflected in the x-axis and instead of being 0, negative 1, it's got the triple so it's going to be 0, negative 3. So the function should come down and look something like this. You'll have to bear with me, I'm not the best at sketching on this computer. It'll pass through here and then go off like that. Main thing is that I've labeled these correctly. Okay, example seven f of two times x. So This now, this type of transformation deals with a horizontal stretch or squash. Horizontal stretch or squash, and by a scale factor of one over a. So the uh, the maximum value. Or this this particular turning point is still going to be zero one. However, it's not going to be negative one zero. I got to half that, so it's going to be negative one half zero. So it's getting squashed in a squashed in a horizontal direction. By a scale factor of 1 over a. Let's have a look at example 8. So we're asked to do negative 3x. 
f of negative 3x. So, similar idea here. The um, negative number means we're going to have a reflection in the y-axis. So, the this particular turning point here, uh, 0, 1, is still going to stay the same, 0, 1. The um, the root is going to appear over here somewhere, and remember it's it's a scale factor of 1 over a, if a is, a, uh, if a is 3, then it's got to come in by 1 third, so multiply it by a third, and we get 1 over 3, 0. So the function should come up like this, pass through here, and on like so. Now I'll do another quick one here. <clears throat> Suppose I was asked to do f of negative one half x. What would happen to the function? It is inside it's inside the function. It's negative. It's inside the function, which means we're dealing in the um horizontal direction. Um, it's negative which means we're going to have a reflection. It's a half so I'm actually going to double it because it's a reciprocal. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Um, so instead of being negative one zero it's got to become positive and double so it's two and zero. The turning point up there is still 0 and 1. So the function will come up like this, pass through here, and pass through that and go off up to infinity. Okay, we're going to have a quick look at uh, one or two more. I'm not going to do any more sketching. Um, so I'm going to go back to Desmos and I'm going to draw the graph of f of x equals 1 over x. So looking at some reciprocal transformations. So let's change that. I'll make this 1. f of x equals 1 over x. So there's f of x equals 1 over x. Let's see what happens when we increase the value of a. When we increase the value of a, you'll notice it's getting further and further away. From the original function so let's just stop at 3. Remember a times f of x is a vertical scale factor of a so you'll see the let's see if we can zoom out actually is the graph still have an asymptote it does the asymptote is still the two axes but you'll notice that function is just getting further and further away. In fact, a times f of x is actually just the same as 3 over x. You can see it there. And if you remember from the last video, 3 over x just moves the function further away from the origin. Okay, let's take a look at f of a times x. So what's happening here? f of a times x is bringing the function closer and closer to the origin. So we can see the green function here, it's getting closer and closer to the origin. If it goes negative, you can imagine what might happen. We end up with a reflection with the same rules apply. Okay, so I highly recommend going onto desmos.com and playing around with some functions so you get the hang of the different types of transformations. But that's all for me uh, for now. I'll be back again with another video soon. Good luck with the revision, and I'll talk to you again sometime.